this is how crazy this gets. Take all of your logic and all of your, well, no, that can't, that can't happen. Take that all out of your mind immediately and know that if Google likes a product that actually isn't being sold, it will push traffic still to that product. You'll actually start to scale easier. You're gonna have a higher average order value because you're gonna usually have a higher conversion rate on the product that you're starting to push. But what you can't do is remove traffic from the product that was actually being pushed by Google. And we actually lost that client because he said, hey, that product doesn't actually sell. It's like, that doesn't matter. That's our winning product to Google. If you remove that, you're removing all of your conversion value. So it's very, very, very dangerous to do this. But here's what's really interesting. If you track this over a time period, you'll actually see the effect of when Google likes a product. Um, I'm gonna pause here as I see a chat, but I wanted to see if there's a question before I move on. Yeah, there's a question from Glenn and he says, but most people will buy two pillowcases rather than one, right? Yes. Yeah, so that's the average order value though. So that's, you're 100% you're right. So that's what we're looking at is who's buying multiples. If I market a $19 product here and I market an $18 product here, uh, this will tell me, hey, the people that actually buy the $19 product will buy two of them on average. Now this is regardless of source. And that's what I love about this too, is that this should hold true, whether we're seeing that on Facebook, we should be able to see that at Google. If we're seeing it on like you know, Instagram, we should be able to see it also on YouTube. Like it should be traffic source agnostic because people are going to buy something more. So that's what's really interesting is you kind of look at A, what is sold at the volume, but B, what is also the ratio of being of things that are being sold. And we can kind of glean in here some, some just simple, simple terms and, and try to identify um, some commonalities. So this pillowcase 1.96, that pillowcase 1.75, that pillowcase 1.74, this pillowcase 1.57 seems to be a common theme. I would, I am spending triple. That's why I'm doing it. I'm spending triple on my pillowcases. I have a higher average order value. So I don't want to necessarily make this as a, hey, how do you get the general population of a country to buy tw two or more of something? That's not what we need to do this. As, as marketers, we're not necessarily hired to say, hey, I have a $20 product, make $40 sales. Not going to happen. It's just not. So this is a way for us to identify what's working. Now we look at everything else and start, try to identify where can we make adjustments and where can we make pushes. The other thing that we have to think about is what's actually now selling pillowcases. Is the pillowcase campaign selling pillowcases or are people coming in on a different platform or sorry, a different medium and buying pillowcases? Because that could be something we can also leverage because that's gonna, that campaign is gonna have a higher than normal average order value, but it's not because of products, it's because of the purchase path. So the way we find this out is we have to go back into our, well, that's weird. Sorry, having a glitch here. There we go, back into our Google Ads campaigns. <clears throat> and then we have to overlay what they call campaign ID. So this is the second part, part, second part of this whole, this whole teaching. So go into columns, go and modify columns, and then go into your tool uh, your, your columns and look at campaign ID here. When you click on campaign ID, uh, move that up. It's gonna give you a, like a six, like a 10 or 16 digit number, this one here. So here's what I'm gonna look at, sleep caps and bonnets. Okay, now is this also selling pillowcases? Well, it's probably close to a pillowcase. So let's just see if this is also selling the products that I know are gonna raise AOV. I don't know if it's gonna, well, you're all seeing this for the first time with me, I haven't done this yet. So let's just see what this works. Go into analytics and we're gonna do a secondary dimension. And we're gonna, in, we're gonna use Google Ads campaign ID. And this is what's gonna tell me what is actually selling for the clicks that are coming from that campaign. So go into campaign ID, click advanced. It says Google Ads campaign ID containing this campaign ID here, hit apply. It's gonna sometimes assist for like four minutes. So just bear with me here. Um, oh, that didn't work. Is that the right? What the heck? Oh, that's right. We don't have it linked. My apologies. This one, we have a, a previous agency that kind of held things hostage. Let me do this. Uh, let me grab a different one real quick. All right, listen to your gut. 
Ooh, that one just changed sites. So give maybe not that one yet. Um, let's do. Let's use this one. Do I still have access to this one here? Check shop. This one is in, I think, a different MCC. I think that was the old one. So I'm just going to try to find one that I can have access to quickly. Is do I have the secondary dimension being pulled in here? There we are. Yes, I do. So Google Ads campaign ID. I'm gonna hop into Jacket Shop. Now this is gonna be a bad, probably a bad example just because I only have one big performance max campaign running right now. Um, but same applies to learning. They sell one product. So this is going to be a bad example, everyone. I'm sorry. Do we have anybody that actually wants me to do this in, in real time for one of their clients? We can, I can pull it up now. This one, I'm, I'm using bad examples. So I'm trying to make this quick. Um, but if anybody has one that they want to use in the, drop it in the chat, I can grab them. Um, if you have the GADs of both the analytics and the Google ads account, that will be helpful. This is not a glitch. I'm interrupting the video you're watching because I need to remind you that I'm always looking for people to join our team. So if you're passionate about Google Ads and you want to work with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. Speaking of working with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, if you're having trouble with Google Ads and you want professional help, that's what we do. You can go to solate.com, that's S-O-L-8.com, to apply for your free, no obligation action plan. And if I've given you any level of value at all, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. That's how we juice the YouTube algorithm algorithm so they actually know that I know what I'm talking about. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or confessions, hit me below in the comments. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. So just as a quick example, this is, I said, hey, what's selling from the Performance Max campaign as an example? And we're going to see average quantity of 222111. So this says, hey, people that actually went into this campaign this last week, um, which we just started kicking up two days ago. So it's going to have very little data uh, in the Performance Max campaign and the products you'll see a delta. Now pick a day that's actually um, that's actually kind of small in time and we'll be able to identify is there a difference between what Google Ads is saying and what Google Analytics is saying. So in the last seven days, I have a purple and gold. Okay, well, is there a purple and gold in here? So there is a purple and gold here. There is one sale. Now what we'll look at elsewhere here is, is there a solid navy blue? And is there a solid navy blue? No. So what happened here is this is where this thing can get tricky is we think, aha, this one, the, the solid navy blue, nine clicks, a sale, you know, 5,600 ROAS. Uh, we spent, you know, $4 to make 234. This is awesome. Let's push this. Just apply this as a standard in learning to any client. It will be any client is going to be the exact same. It does not mean that the solid navy blue sold. That's not what sold. Something else sold. And we'd have to literally go minute by minute to identify what's going to sell. And that's not going to be something we could do at a grand scale. It's just never going to happen. So what we'll have to look at is what products are getting the majority of clicks and what products are getting the majority of sales. And if that it usually has each purchase has two over a long enough period of time, maybe take that product and actually start to drive more traffic to it because people are coming in saying, yeah, I need this product. And they're navigating over to the other product and buying that. Well, if you add in more ad spend to the campaign, what you're doing is you're asking people to take an additional step that people may not take, but also the people that if you remove that step, they might purchase more frequently. So I don't have to try to click on product A to go find product B to buy product B. I'm just going to start showing product B more. Here's the bad part about this though. If you take away product A's viewership, Google is not going to just start to sell it, to sell the product that was actually being sold more frequently. Google ties and pushes a user to a product. This is how crazy this gets. Take all of your logic and all of your, well, no, that can't, that can't happen. Take that all out of your mind immediately and know 
that if Google likes a product that actually isn't being sold, it will push traffic still to that product. Whether you, if you turn that product off and show the product that's being sold, it will not deliver the same result. It will say, well, I, I'm not gonna send these users to that product because all, was, all I was tracking was that user clicks on that product and I make money. So what you have to do is you have to start a different campaign alongside of the product that's actually being clicked on that's being sold to then say, can I just start the path here and get that to ramp up? You'll actually start to scale easier. You're going to have a higher average order value because you're going to usually have a higher conversion rate on the product that you're starting to push. What you can't do is remove traffic from the product that was actually being pushed by Google. There's a company in here that, that we saw this happen to very uh, very frequently. And actually, Leandra, I think, was a part of a company, um, along with myself, I forget the other client manager or specialist, I think before we even had Strategist, um, but it was a person that sold uh, cornhole gear. When their amethyst purple and turquoise blue went out of stock, they went out of out of Google Ads business basically six months later. You saw it teeter up, and then it never came back because that one product that actually never sold, they discontinued that product, which means Google said, okay, so just stop sending 80% of your conversions to this place, and now we just don't know where to go. And we actually lost that client because he said, hey, that product doesn't actually sell. It's like, that doesn't matter. That's our winning product to Google. If you remove that, you're removing all of your conversion value. And we actually saw it over the course of a year. It went all the way up, removed that product all the way down. Right at the end, he added the product back in. It went all the way up, or it started going up, and then he ran out of money. So it's very, very, very dangerous to do this. But here's what's really interesting. If you track this over a time period, you'll actually see the effect of when Google likes a product. So you'll see there's a time period here where my clicks, my conversions are good. And then the clicks go up, but the conversions go down. During this time period, there was a massive loss of, of revenue. So we'll just take the 16th through the 27th. So the 16th through the 27th here, and compared to the previous period, the spend went up 25%. The conversion value went down by 31%. Our ROAS was cut in half. We already talked about this because that one product went out of stock. But what didn't happen when that product went out of stock is Google did not reallocate the users quick enough to other products that were in stock in order to make up for the product that was out of stock. Is it because Google tied an audience to it? Perhaps. Is it because this product was actually being sold the most? No, this product was not actually being sold the most. It's just where people and Google knew that there was a connection that people would click on this product and buy anything on the site. So when this product went out of stock, we lost half our revenue. So it was a really, really dangerous thing for this product to go out of stock and this product will never go out of stock ever again, even if it's actually out of stock. <laughs> We're just gonna stop showing it as out of stock. We're just gonna hopefully keep up with demand because this one product here had a lot of sales. And it wasn't the only product that sold. We have tons of products that were selling in here. We have a lot of conversions through July and August. This whole page has products sold. Like there's, there's good stuff here. It's just, this was our flagship product. So in your research, if you find that the product that's actually being clicked on and quote unquote uh, sold at a conversion uh, value, if this isn't actually the product being sold, don't remove this. Just add another campaign of the products that you see being sold because of clicks on this product. Hey everyone, John Moran here with Solutions 8 and today we're going to be discussing what is the SKU performance. Uh, sometimes we get asked this question by you know leads, existing clients, even just you know during our, our speaking engagements or when we're teaching courses. Um, and it is a long answer.